Welcome. I'm Gary Abbott, Director of Communications with USA Wrestling, and I'll be one of the press officers in Paris for uh, wrestling at the games. Um, and as many of you should know, the US Olympic team trials for wrestling is this weekend at Penn State, um, Friday and Saturday, April 19 to 20. Uh, we'll have over 200 athletes competing in 18 weight classes. Uh, and it'll be live on NBC and Peacock for those who'd like to follow the action. Uh, yeah, so far this um, cycle, the USA has earned 13 Olympic quotas in sport of wrestling. And so all 13 of the athletes in those weight classes will punch their ticket for Paris. There are five other weight classes in which the Olympic trials champion uh, will have one more opportunity to earn us the quota and have an opportunity to go to Paris. So uh, we'll see 13 Olympians crowned on Saturday night in Penn State. And uh, it's, it's go time for our athletes, let's put it that way. Uh, we've had athletes that were invited to attend the uh, uh, press summit, but uh, literally they're starting to compete in a few hours. So uh, instead, the USOPC made it uh, an opportunity for us to, to bring one of our national coaches with us, as well as to zoom in three of our top athletes to tell a little bit about themselves and, and, and about the upcoming trials. Um, and I'll give you an idea what kind of format we're going to go. Uh, for the first 20 minutes or so, I'll ask some questions to each of the uh, athletes and, and our coach. Um, and then from there on, we'll open up the floor for questions. Uh, certainly uh, look forward to giving you an opportunity to get to meet uh, these th three great athletes and our coach. Uh, let me introduce our, our guests sitting with me here on the stage. He was an NCAA champion at University of Iowa, nationally ranked as a freestyle wrestler as an athlete. He's our first and only women's national coach in wrestling, uh, joined USA Wrestling in 2003, coached in the historic first Olympic Games in 2004 when the women's wrestling was introduced, and has coached five Olympic teams. Is Terry Steiner, sitting here. If you look up on the Zoom, uh, I'm gonna go in the order of how I see you. So we've got a native of Granger, Indiana, two-time college national champ at King University, Won a bronze medal at 50 kilograms at the 2000 Olympic Games uh, in Tokyo. Add in two silver world medals and two world bronze medals. We have Sarah Hildebrand. Mm -hmm. um, next to her on the screen, um, he's a native of Cuba, a nation where he won a Pan American Games medal and a Pan American Wrestling Championships gold. After emigrating to the United States, he became eligible to compete for Team USA for just in time for the two 2020 Olympic trials. Uh, he's wrestled on two senior world teams for the United States, and just a few months ago, he qualified the quota for us at 97 kilograms in Greco-Roman wrestling, Alan Vera. At the bottom of your screen, native of St. Paris, Ohio, two-time NCAA champ and Hodge Trophy winner at Penn State, university that's hosting our championships this week. Won the gold medal at 86 kilograms at the 2000 Olympic Games in Tokyo. Um, add in his three senior world gold medals and a senior world silver medal, Mr. David Taylor. Um, so I'll, I'll start with some questions. Uh, if it's okay with uh, our athletes, I'll, I'll start with Coach Steiner since he's here in person and, and then we'll move around the, the circle here. So Coach, um, the United States has qualified all six women's weight classes for the Paris Games. Uh, so every winner on Saturday from the women's program is going to go to the Olympics. Uh, how important was it for our athletes to get those quotas taken care of so now they can make the team and, pro and put their efforts into winning us gold medals? Well, I think it, it helps us be able to just focus on, on the task at hand. I mean, this week is a very important week for uh, the women's team and, and establishing our Olympic team. And, and so we don't have to have the thought of qualifying the weight going in there, right? We, we know that uh, if, if we uh, make the team this week that, that we're on the U.S. Olympic team and, and all of our focuses and our energies can go to that. So, and, and I think that, you know, it's important for the U.S. to have a full team, right? And I think um, we didn't want to have to go over to Europe to get that done. 
Um, so I'm, I'm glad that we got it done before the Olympic team trials and, and now our focuses can be solely on making the U.S. team and, and then onward to, you know, perform well in Paris. So going into the trials, knowing your athletes and how the United States has competed uh, internationally uh, in women's freestyle, what are your goals and expectations for our team in Paris? Well, we have very high goals. Oh, we feel that we have the team that can compete with anyone. And, um, you know, that's exactly what we want to do. We have uh, veteran leadership on our team. Um, we have, uh, I believe, you know, four athletes sitting in the finals of the, of the Olympic team trial that have already been on this Olympic team. And um, we have multiple world medals and world titles um, um, going into um, this trial. So, you know, we, we feel that, you know, we, we know there's a lot of competition out there. Obviously, we're going into the Olympic Games, but, but we feel that Team USA can, can rise to the top. Um, we have the leadership there and we have the youth coming up. Uh, we've had unprecedented growth in the U.S. with, with um, women's wrestling and, and because of that we have, you know, our, our youth pushing our, our veteran leadership and, and that, that only makes for a great competition and, and, you know, higher performances along the way. So um, we're very excited about going into Paris. So, Coach, um, having competed in the Olympic trials and witnessed all of the trials since being national coach, could you explain what makes the Olympic trials such an exciting and intense event for both the athletes and the fans? Well, I, I think the uniqueness about the Olympic trials is, you know, it's only, once, it's only every four years, but you don't get many chances at it, right? And, and even if you're the elite level people like, like what we're looking at with, with Sarah and Alan and David, I mean, you know, you only get so many chances at making an Olympic team and that's what makes it special, right? For me personally as a coach, it's, it's my least favorite event, right? Because you only have six athletes that walk away from it happy. And, um, and for a lot of people, it's the end of the road, right? And, and so it makes it very hard and very unique as a coach and a mentor and almost like a father figure to a lot of them. Uh, it's a very hard event, right? And I, I try to just avoid the athletes going in and they, they know that, that, you know, when they go in there, they, they get to do their job. And I try to kind of step aside and step away and kind of avoid all of them because uh, you don't want, you know, you just want to be impartial and unbiased and they, they go do their job. and. It's their job to select the team, right? And it's our job to educate them along the way. And so, um, and whoever makes the team will, will go forward and, and get ready for Paris after this weekend. But um, um, yeah, again, it, it's a great event, and and you know, there, I think there's probably nothing like it in the U.S. Um, as a wrestling event. But but it is a hard event, right? For for coaches and athletes alike, for different reasons. So uh, we'll switch over to Sarah. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Sarah called in from Colorado Springs, and she's an early bird, so she wanted to come visit with you guys. Um, so Sarah, I understand as soon as we're done here, you've got a workout, and then you're going to get on a plane to go to State College, right? Um, could you talk a little bit about what it's like the last few days for an athlete when they're about to go to the biggest event every four years and, and what, what you're going to do in the next couple of days before you wrestle on Saturday. Yeah, it's all excitement. I feel like I had this early interview this morning and I still was not able to sleep last night because I'm like pumped up. Um, but yeah, today's travel day, which I'm leaving a little earlier than other people just because I like to get there and kind of get in that routine. Um, you know, I cut some weight, so it's kind of about getting my weight where it needs to be, getting things dialed in. Um, <coughs> but really, it's just like trying to keep things light, have a good time. Um, I'll be with my family, so spending a lot of time with them, uh, managing that energy because it's definitely through the roof for me right now, and I don't wrestle till Saturday. So just kind of getting that in a good spot, getting my weight down, and getting ready for the big show. So uh, you won us a bronze medal in Tokyo. A short quad. I mean, we're only three years to the next Olympic Games after you guys competed in Tokyo. What's been uh, the same in your preparation 
for these trials is the last one. And what have you done differently as you head into State College to make the team? Yeah, it's funny you ask that because it's been so tempting to compare the two to each other because it's so close together and also because I was somewhat successful last quad. So it's it's tempting to be like, oh, I want it to be the exact same. Um, but I knew there were changes I needed to make. I didn't get my ultimate goal of a gold medal uh, last Olympics. There were changes that needed to be made, and that took a lot of courage to kind of release some of the things I was doing that brought me some success and good success, but not the success, you know? Um, it took some courage to kind of like go with those things. And, and I really wanted to grow and move into this, um, you know, I'm a veteran athlete and I wanted to become a lot more intuitive and to trust myself and, and step into that and believe in what my body's telling me and my heart's telling me and really get connected with all of that. So that's been a really big change in my training. Um, it's just really looking inward and trusting that and listening to that and moving forward from there. So as tempting as it's been to be like, oh, I want to do exactly what I did in 2021. I've really had to step in and grow. And I think I've done a good job of it. Um, so I'm excited. So uh, we'll switch now to Alan. Um, so Alan, um, could you explain your decision to uh, leave Cuba and come to the United States and Tell us about your biggest obstacles getting here to the USA, and then once you arrived, what kind of challenges did you meet as an athlete and as a person? Hey, morning, guys. Um, first of all, thank you guys for bringing me to the studio, and I'm so glad to get a couple of guys to view. So with so much experience at the Olympics, you like a like a commentary is uh, the coach Terry Steiner, and the, these two great athletes like Sarah and Tyler. Uh, Gary, to be honest, uh, wasn't too hard. Explain you why. Um, I already, in that moment, I get it 34 years old. But when I lived in Cuba, I was 25, right? So it was exactly like a four months before the Rio Olympics. I supposed to compete over there, but uh, I put it on the scale between the, the Olympics and my life. And uh, I said, okay, you know what? The Olympics can be finished uh, like in 15 days, a month, but the life is going to be for forever, right? And uh, that was one of the, my biggest decisions where I took in my life. And uh, I'm so proud of me. So, um, okay, go ahead. What was difficult once you got here? I mean, what challenges did you face as a new immigrant here in the United States? Well, you, you already give it the answer in your question. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just be the immigrants of different countries, different language, uh, different culture. But uh, I'm always putting into my head like, uh, okay, I come to US, so uh, they give me the chance to live in this great country, the best country I've ever been seen before. And uh, I just want to give you them back and uh, just join to the culture and learn from the old Americans and uh, you give my the best to this nation, but in my personal opinion, is the best nation in the world. Um, so you were eligible to compete uh, at the last trials and did not make the team. Uh, since then, you've made a couple world teams. Uh, what's been the key for you in your improvement to put you in a position where you're only two matches away from being on the American Olympic team? Uh, yeah, like you say, uh, in 20, so we live in 2020, we live in the, this pandemic, like by COVID-19 and the coronavirus, sorry. And, uh, I wasn't, to be honest, uh, I wasn't ready for the, I didn't know what the Olympic trials mean. You know, so we don't have this in Cuba. So I see more of the guys, so they training for it. But I wasn't ready, to be honest, uh, for the Olympic trials. And uh, after this, uh, I take a seat and I say, okay, so you want to continue? You want to stop? I said, no. So this is what, uh, what I dream of my whole life like athletes be at the Olympics, you know, and no participate is competing at the Olympics. And uh, I said, you know what, so let's continue. So let, let me do the right things. Uh, since 2021, like you say, it's a short, it's a short cycle, only three years of separate from the, the one trials to other. Um, I feel right now so much mature, um, more confident. Uh, I got, uh, I've been working through all these three years. So, uh, really hard and uh, consistently. And uh, what it made me 
you know, feel like I'm ready to go make it the Olympic teams uh, and competing uh, in Paris. Thank you, Alan. So, uh, yeah, sure. da David, um, in 2021, we were supposed to hold the trials at Penn State, you know, your backyard, and they had to move it to Texas uh, because of the COVID situation. Um, but we're back, right? And as a reigning Olympic champion, uh, you're going to get an opportunity to wrestle in your hometown for your second Olympic team berth. Um, what's it like for you going into this? What's the atmosphere right now in State College uh, where everyone knows the wrestling trials are coming in? Well, we were excited to host it, you know, the first time and, you know, unexpected delays. And I think it's just been something that wrestling fans have looked forward to for four years. You know, I think Penn State and State College is the, the mecca of wrestling in the country, you know, especially the collegiate level. It's something that, you know, all, all, all wrestling fans can relate to, you know, what Penn State wrestling has done to Coach Sanderson. So I think there's this, like, mystique and aura of, like, what happens here. And then you throw in the Olympic trials, and now you get the best of the best in our country coming in to wrestle for the Olympic team. And we've kind of heard from the previous athletes and Coach Steiner about what that means. And, you know, people in this town are very excited. I, I was checking out a register yesterday and there was a conversation in front of me. They were talking about the Olympians coming into town. They were talking about the Olympic trials and how they're not going to be able to get a ticket, but they're going to watch it. And, and I just think the town's excited. The economy's excited. Um, so, yeah, it, it's something that has been looked forward to for a while. And, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, and it's right around the corner. So um, you won the gold, Tokyo, right? Um, but since then, you've won two more world championships, made the finals the other year. Uh, what's it been the key to be able to maintain that level of uh, performance, especially, you know, as, as you continue to grow in your career? What's the, the key to keeping on top? I, I just, my, my goal is always just to been the best, you know? And I think in order to do that, you have to continue to improve, you know, whether you're, trying to separate yourself from other people or you're trying to close the gap or whatever that may be, but you're never staying the same. You know, I just feel like if you stay the same, you are getting passed up. So I'm just constantly trying to find ways to improve. And, and I'm fortunate, very fortunate that in the world, you know, I have a fierce, fierce competitor that I have to wrestle every single year at the world Olympic games. Um, and in the United States, you know, I've been challenged every year to make the team. So it's never been a year where it's like, Oh, well, I feel like I can make it this year. And I can't ever, I can never take it for granted every year I have to be sharp, sharper than the year before. Um, so it's a testament to my training environment, you know, my com competition environment. Um, and every year I have to be better and in order to achieve those goals. And this year is no different. You know, um, I have a lot of, I have a lot of expectation of myself. Um, and, and it's good to have a high expectation um, because I feel like that's just really where you're going to get your best results. So, um, uh, there's a ton of Penn State athletes, current and, and former, that have made the trials. The university has more athletes than any other college that have qualified for this event. Um, last year in Final X, you wrestled a Penn State athlete in the finals, Aaron Brooks, who's in your weight class uh, again. Um, what's the, talk about the uh, level of wrestling uh, uh, at the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club and, and at Penn State and how all the people there are pushing each other to raise the bar for themselves and our country. It's a unique environment. Um, it's a very unique environment, you know, with Penn State and the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. You know, I've been to, I came to Penn State in 2009, you know, so 15 years ago. Um, it was just a start, you know, of, of what Penn State Wrestling and the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club ha has become. And in that time, you know, each era of wrestling that's come through Penn State, you know, stays and wrestles in the Indian Wrestling Club. So you have this process of progression where you have, you know, postgraduates wrestling with the younger guys. And, you know, to make the team, to make the Olympic team in Tokyo, I had to wrestle my teammate, Bo Nickel. Um, you know, last year I had to wrestle Aaron Brooks. My teammate, you know, there's a good chance this year I'll wrestle one of my teammates as well. So I just think this training environment, like I said, it's, uh, you know, we all, have this, these high goals and we're constantly pushing ourselves. And, and one thing that I'm very fortunate and you mentioned, like, how do I continue to get better as I get older? There's not a day I can go into my room in the practice room and take it for granted because we have so many young, hungry competitors, you know, coach Steiner alluded to it earlier about the, the youth pushing the, pushing the veterans. Um, so just 
you, you really have no choice, you know, it's, it's sink or swim, you know, and, uh, I'm a competitor and I, I want to continue to get better. And, um, it's, 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 that, that, it's part of that process. It's part of that process, but, uh, you know, none of us would achieve our goals here if it wasn't for each one of us pushing each other. Well, at this point, um, I'm going to shut up and let our journalists ask questions. So, um, if you have a question, I see that there's a mic walking around. Raise your hand. Please identify yourself and who you wish to speak to. And uh, uh, let's have a shot at it. Thank you. Good morning, Gary. Rich Perlman from the Sports Examiner. Nice to see you. Um, this is for Sarah, I guess, and for David. Um, you are veterans of the World Championships, and you've been to an Olympic Games. And you're going to see the same faces in Paris that you saw, if you get to Paris, that you saw in the World Championships. How is the Olympic Games different from going to a world? Sorry, you go first. Okay. Um, you know, obviously just the energy around the event. You know, it's the Olympics. It is similar people, but there is the fact that it's the Olympic Games on the line, and that's ultimately a lot of people's goals here is become an Olympic champion. So I think that that plays a huge role in it. Um, but on the flip side of that, knowing going into those competitions, like these are women that I've wrestled before. I don't need to wrestle the event, right? I just need to wrestle the person in front of me. And um, that actually can kind of help take away some of that nervous energy that surrounds it. Um, but at the end of the day, this is the Olympic Games. And that's my goal is to become an Olympic champion. And that happens every four years. So uh, there, there definitely is a difference there. David? I think the biggest difference between the world championships, and the Olympic games is, is just the mystique. You know, the Olympics is something that every single person knows what the Olympics is. They understand what it stands for and the significance of it, what, what goes into that journey for the world championships. I think people don't really understand that it's equally as difficult um, in terms of competitors in, in the bracket, but it's just not something that people recognize the same. And, and just the whole, I think when the Olympics every four years, the world kind of stops and every country starts to really build up their athletes and they want to follow them in the games, especially our country, you know, in the United States, you know, we, uh, just the excitement when you get into the Olympic year. And, and I know that, you know, after achieving my ultimate goal of winning the Olympics in Tokyo, my reason to continue to compete was to wrestle in the 2024 Olympics in Paris. You know, it wasn't about the world championships. Um, those were just the stepping stones along the way. Those are the building blocks, you know, in wrestling, our pinnacle is the Olympic games. So it, like any other sport, and, you know, we're excited for this opportunity, you know, really are for, it can be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, so every time you, you get the opportunity to go compete, you want to compete at your best. Um, Cause ultimately we're just trying to fulfill those childhood goals and those are right around the corner. Sir. Matt Trout with sports travel and the teens conference. This is for Terry and Sarah. You've mentioned Terry also just earlier about the the depth that you're seeing in the program right now. Women's sports is having such investment across the board in a lot of the, the most high the most high profile sports in terms of investment and attention. What have you guys seen on the women's wrestling stage, whether it's private donations to the to the USA wrestling and just attention in the events that you're getting? Well, we've seen unbelievable, you know, the, the growth that we've had is really unprecedented. Look at the landscape of women's wrestling in the U.S. over the last eight years. In 2016, we had six states that were sanctioned in the sport of, of girls' high school wrestling, and today we're at 45, right? And, and, and in 2016, we had about 40 collegiate wrestling programs for women, and today we're at over 150. So the growth has been unprecedented, and with that growth, we have more opportunity, right? And with that opportunity, we have more numbers. So we definitely have a group of young kids that have been inspired by the people uh, that are in front of them right now, you know, our veterans. They've been inspired by this, these group of veterans that have really moved the sport to a different level, and now they're the ones pushing them and and driving them higher, right? And, and so it's a win-win situation for women's wrestling in the U.S. And, you know, whoever comes out on top will be ready to compete at the Olympic Games in Paris, right? And, and so, you know, that, that's their job to figure that out. But, but the, the table has been set, right? And, and 
and we have a lot of young inspired athletes that you know they don't want to wait until people retire they want to push through right now and and so for, for my position right i mean it's it's very satisfying to see the, the growth that we've had and and you know and how our our younger generation is you know stepping forward and and really how our how our veterans are just leading and mentoring along the way i mean you you have uh, a person like Sarah who is in, in the practice room helping those younger people and, and helping them you know, compete at a higher level just by uh, letting them follow them around and, and watching them and listening to them every day. And, and so it's inspiring to see it on both ends and um, I couldn't be happier to be a part of it. Sarah? No, yeah, exactly what Terry's saying. You know, when I started wrestling, um, or in my high school, I wrestled on the boys team and I was probably one of three women in the whole state who wrestled. Uh, and now there's 40 girls on my high school team. Um, and I went to high school a while ago, but not that long ago. <laughs> so it's grown so quickly. Um, and even just to see how much change in my senior career, like when I first came onto the senior scene to now, just like the opportunities that I have that, uh, the younger girls have, um, in terms of, you know, where they can go to school to wrestle and IL deals, there's so much opportunity in front of them and for myself and for people coming up. And it's just so cool to see that that amount of change and growth in a relatively quick amount of time. I think when we think about like these huge changes and this like big upcoming, like, uh, of women's sports or, or something like that you think of it in like this huge long thing and, and it has been a long fight for sure, but it's just felt so quick in this boom, powerful moment that we're in right now. That's just really skyrocketing. And it's so neat to be a part of, um, in a way it's like really emotional just because I've seen and can remember where it was when I started and where it is now. And it's just so different and it's so exciting. Next. Hi, Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. Um, I wanted to kind of pick up on the thread in what you're talking about, about the impact of the college pipeline. College sports in this country is undergoing like seismic change, and we don't really know what it's gonna look like in the future. So if Sarah or David, people or, or yourself, like what is, how important is or are those college programs, and do you have concerns about all this change that we might you know, in future, lose any of that pipeline? There, there's definitely concern. I mean, you know, I mean, I think that with the NIL and the transfer portal and, and how that's affecting college sports, I think it's a concern for everyone. Uh, where does this end and where does it go to? But, but you know, we're the, on the other side of it, we're the envy of the world, right? That we have our, our athletic programs tied to our academic institutions, right? We're the envy of the world and, and the growth that we've had. And, you know, so I'm hoping and I'm, you know, I'm thinking that we'll find some way through this, right? And, and I think right now it's just a, you know, it's such a pinnacle. Like nobody knows where it's going and nobody knows where it's going to end. But, you know, eventually this is going to settle, settle in, I, I believe, and, and we'll find our way through it. And I don't think anyone has a, a real answer uh, right now on, on where this is going to go and where it's going to end. But, but I do think that we'll find a positive way through it. David or Sarah? I would say that, you know, there's... There's a lot of uncertainty, you know, in terms of what does the future look like? You know, college sports has changed. But I would say that in wrestling, and I think just to echo a little bit what we've talked about a little bit, is we're seeing historic youth movement in our sport. Um, there's, there's a lot more um, opportunity at a young age to really feel that you can compete at a high level, you know, whether that is NIL and college co of wrestling or just the development at a younger age. So, I mean, we're seeing some of the best results we've ever seen in the history of our sport. And I'd say the future in our sport continues to look brighter and brighter because of these young athletes that are competing. So I think there are, are obviously a track that we're on. It's beneficial. Um, I think that, you know, we'll obviously what like coach said, you know, we'll see kind of where the college landscape settles in, but I do feel that, you know, as a, as a sport, um, we're doing things correctly because kids are developing younger and younger. And, um, 
they're seeing results at the highest level. They're feeling that they're attainable for themselves. And that's uh, obviously that, that hunger and the desire to be great is, uh, I think, really great for us. Is there anything on the women's side? I mean, college wrestling's different now than it was when you were a king, yeah? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. My college experience was a lot different. Um, I think I had like eight schools to choose from. So really, it's just growing in a sense of, you know, we can go to so many more schools or so many more options and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it is, there's all that uncertainty, like, where is this going? But with that said, a lot of times uncertainty is just having the courage to step into that. And it's greater than you could have ever imagined. So I think it's really awesome that this is growing how it is and kind of what David was saying, our, our youth has just really exploded and becoming so talented so soon. And, um, I think we continue to kind of figure it out and keep stepping into that uncertainty with good intentions that is only going to lead to really great things. Next question. Hello, Amy Berg, freelance. I have a technical wrestling question for Coach Steiner. Since you've coached both men and women, and it's very physically, you know, strength is such a big uh, factor, do women use their physical leverage differently than men? How did, do the styles differ based on center of gravity and natural strength tendencies? Thanks. Well, first I'll correct you a little bit. I, I've, coached, I've coached men before, uh, but I've been with the women's program now for 22 years, so my focus has, is there now. Uh, there's some differences. I mean, wrestling is wrestling, technique is technique, motivating is motivating. Um, but th there's definitely some differences within the sport. Just like you said, the, 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 you know, the center of gravity, uh, the, the upper body strength compared to the lower body strength um, with men and women is different. I, I think the flexibility is a different issue um, that we have. And, and so, so there's differences with it. I don't think it's so different, though. I think that uh, a lot of time we, we tend to make it too different and it doesn't have to be that different. Um, and I think that that uh, brings some fear for coaches that may want to step in or are looking to step into the women's side of the sport. Um, and sometimes we can try to make it too different. And I think really, um, I think there's, you know, if you're a wrestling coach, you can, you can coach both, right? And, and you, you have the ability now to, to coach both if, if that's your desire. So. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question, but I mean, there, there, there's some differences for sure that we can focus on and things like that, but, but I don't think it's so different. Next question. Hi, this is, this is for Alan, uh, Liz Robbins, International New York Times. Uh, Alan, you mentioned that the United States is the greatest country in the world. So what are the three things <laughs> that make it the best country for you as an immigrant? And also, um, you know, when you're going to be wearing, as you're wearing the uniform now, what do you envision feeling? Um, okay, first of all, uh, I feel like a freedom like a man, right? The second one is uh, the economy of the country. And the third one, it's uh, the chance to get a life like a human being, like a person. Uh, okay, so about the, the representing U.S. and uh, and this uniform is, I think it's, uh, it's the least what I can do for the country. Uh, it's the least what I can do for the, this organization like USA Wrestling. So they helped me and they accepted me competing for U.S. Uh, I get the process, obviously, but uh, wasn't easy, to be honest. Wasn't easy. They take me a couple of years. So I sacrificed a lot. So I've been training with the with the Greco team, even with the freestyle, for so many years. So even when I cannot compete for US because I wasn't an idiot. I I can compete before, and uh, I said, you know what? So since 2021, so I started competing for this country. Uh, I did my the best. I know I know per my performance wasn't what I expecting and someone expecting, but. Uh, Right now, I feel like I'm ready to go. 
and uh, I feel so much mature and uh, I'm going to do everything what I have to do for getting that medal at the Olympics and uh, for this country. So, Alan, um, I remember when you won your first nationals and you talked about how exciting it was to get interviewed as the national champion, you know, and actually from me, <laughs> which was fun. Um, so, I mean, along the process, you obviously had goals to be in this position you're in today, right? Has it been a, a real uh, exciting journey for you to be two wins away from the Olympic team? Wow, well, Gary, you had a good memory. So it, that was a couple of years ago <laughs> with my first interview. And I remember I doing so... I did it with you, you know, on the match after the tournament. But right now, look at where I am right now. So like you say, you're so too much away from participating at the Olympics and competing at the Olympics for U.S. And uh, next to next to the great athletes uh, to competing for U.S., I'm really excited. And they see something where it made me pushing hard every single day, so push a little bit forward. So I know we get uh, so many interviews, but uh, so far, this is the, the best one what I ever had in my whole career. And uh, I know if I can make it the Olympics and uh, I can make it the the, my goal is to get a medal. It's going to be so much more. <laughs> I know. Excellent. Next question, please. Right. I just had a follow-up for Alan. Uh, where was your naturalization ceremony? Was it in person or online? Was it in person? Was in person because um, I'd be able to get in 2020, but uh, all the immigration office was shut down and closed and they postponed my interview for three, four, three, four times. And, uh, I just get it. Uh, I just get it the chance to get my naturalization interview in person three weeks before the Olympic trials it was it three weeks before the Olympic trials. And, uh, I got it traveling because I was out of the States. Uh, I got it coming back to New York, actually New Jersey, sorry. And, uh, make it an interview. Yeah. In 2021. Yeah, you just snuck in, didn't you, Alan? Right at time. <laughs> yeah, it was only three weeks. Uh, but that's why I say in the beginning. So, I want to, comp I want to compete, right? But uh, I wasn't ready, to be honest. So, because I say, okay, so I know they don't want to call me. So, why I have to continue? But uh, it's something what I love about the, all these kids in U.S. Uh, how hard they're working, and this is the one sense where they say never give up, never give up, never give up. So they give you the chance, and they give you the chance to me. Next question. Nick, Nick will over Olympic rings and other things. This question is for Sarah and David as returning Olympians. In addition to your goals on the mat, is there any aspect of the Olympic experience that you perhaps missed because of COVID or other reasons? Uh, something about the Olympic experience overall that you're hoping to achieve uh, in Paris? Yeah, you know, my family is a huge part of my wrestling career. You know, thankfully, they're so supportive of me and my whole family wrestled. So it's been a whole, you know, family affair for a very long time. And I think sharing that moment with them um, in Tokyo was something I really thought about and dreamt about. And my family didn't get to be there. So going into the next Olympics for Paris, you know, just imagining getting to share this dream with them there in person is, is everything. And, uh, I just would absolutely love that chance. And especially with everything we've now gone through, just to kind of share that moment, that pinnacle of my wrestling career with them would be everything. And then, you know, all the fun stuff too, just, you know, maybe seeing others, sports compete or opening or closing ceremonies. We didn't get to participate in those um, in Tokyo. So stuff like that, you know, like that's, it's a lot of fun stuff. You know, you're there to compete and all of that, but there is so much that makes the Olympics so fun. And last Olympics, it was kind of just like, we're here. We have, we're just going to wrestle. That's all we're doing. And obviously that's would be my plan when I went to Paris, but um, you know, there's all that stuff that tags along with it. That would be really cool too. David, anything? I think, you know, we talked about, you know, everyone knows the Olympics and what that means, what that, the impact that it has on your life. 
Um, you know, I, I just know that my entire life, every decision that I had made since I'd started wrestling at five years old, you know, I, I saw my coach win the Olympics in 2004. So I was 13 years old. And I think that was the first time that I really realized like that was an attainable thing for me, you know? And I remember just like watching him wrestle. I remember his demeanor. I remember just even his like celebration when he won and just like the joy of watching him. Like, man, that's what I want. I remember seeing his coach, his, his family in the stands. Um, and that was, you know, that was, that was my idol. That's what I looked up to. That's who I wanted to wrestle like. That's who I wanted to be like. And so that was the, always the vision that I had of the Olympics, you know, and then obviously the adversity that goes into the last Olympics and knowing that you're going to do it without all of those people. We had our close supporting staff. We had our coaches and our training partners. But in a way, it was the easiest. It was the hardest Olympic Games. It was the easiest Olympic Games because there was no other external distraction. The only distraction was I hope I get to go wrestle and nothing gets shut down. That was really the only distraction that we had. You know, we were we had a great plan with Team USA going into that event and uh, we were very well prepared. But we just had to focus on just wrestling. That was pretty much it. You know, this other stuff didn't really happen. So I think going into this game, to having the experience of already wrestling the Olympics, having that opportunity to go and experience that part of it, the competition part of it, can enjoy this element, can really enjoy this. You know, this is this is this is the fun stuff. You know, all the all the excitement, all the media, all the things that go into the Olympics, I feel like this time around we can enjoy. <laughs> um and it doesn't take away from the difficulty of winning the Olympics. Obviously, that is still very hard, but I think that it's um uh, it's enjoyable process. And then for me, I'd say the biggest change is, you know, I was, I had, I had a daughter going into the last Olympics. Now I have two more daughters. So I have three girls. Um, my oldest is going to be four next week. And she constantly is telling me, she's like, daddy, I need you to rest up because I need you to win another Olympic gold necklace for me. And I want another one. I want two of them. And she tells me that pretty much every week, you know, and uh, she asked me, like, daddy, how was wrestling? Did you feel good today? Did you, are you ready to go get another Olympic gold medal? Um, so I just think that part is going to be really cool to be able to share that with my family. Um, and definitely my oldest, because she understands it. She kind of sees the sacrifices that go into this and why I leave a practice twice a day. Um, and then my family, you know, just, they've been a part of this journey forever, you know, whether it was driving to practices, to, to events, you know, getting me to where I need to be, to be in this situation. You know, my family was the reason I was able to do that. So to be able to share all this, share this entire moment with all of them, uh, it's going to be really special. Well, um, I think we've hit our zero, zero, zero on the clock. So I'd really like to thank everyone for the opportunity to have us zoom in some of our stars. If you still want to go to Penn State, I can get you in. So it's only a few days. You can get there real quick. We'd love to have you down there because this is one of the best events on earth. It's Steiner's least favorite event. It's my favorite one. So. Come on down, we'd love to have you and certainly look forward to sharing our journey with you all once we get out to Paris. Um, thank you very much and if you need any more information on wrestling, harass the hell out of me, I'm, I'm ready to go. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, guys.